fascinating. Um, maybe get, getting back to Jerusalem, um, you know, who, who's in charge? You know, as I've been reading my own history and, and trying to brush up on this, it just seems to flip back and forth between kings being in charge and high priests being in charge. Is, is there a difference? Does it mean anything? Who, you know, how, how does this role work? It's a very interesting question. It's a question that we actually not a hundred percent have a hundred percent clarity on. Um, the idea is that in biblical times, uh, the high priest was also the king. However, in historic times, it was always clear, and this is part of the Near East more broadly, that the high priest is the leader of Jerusalem, is the leader of the council, highest council of Jerusalem. He's the highest religious authority in the city, but that there is also a king somewhere else. Okay. And that is really here is a pivotal moment because with the Maccabees, especially at the very late second and early first century, it's for the first time in hundreds and hundreds of years that they make themselves king and high priest as well. So there's a high priest in Jerusalem. And, and even the Maccabees, it seems to be that they still seem it necessary, even though they're constantly trying to, to, to win off independence from the Seleucid, from the Seleucid kings, they, they still seem it necessary for their own self-representation, presumably within the city, that the Seleucid kings make them high priest. So in 153, allegedly, Jonathan and the first book of Maccabees presents this very proudly that, that, that Seleucid usurper, his name is Alexander Ballas, um, and appoints him high priest. And to me, there's no reason why one Maccabees needs to talk about the Seleucids at all, unless that has a meaning, right? Unless that appointment to the high priesthood by somebody who's not of the family of who should be high priest must have a meaning in Jerusalem itself, right? And must carry weight, political weight. So yeah, the, 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 from that moment onwards, we talked about the period about 160, um, at this time period, there is still a high priest. Before the Maccabees re reach the high priest, so they're clearly the largest power holder in the city. But there also is uh, a high priest called Alchemos, who apparently dies around 160. And we don't really know what happens for the seven years in between. Some scholars say that you must have had a high priest. Somebody else must have been high priest. It must have been one of the Maccabees. Uh, but we just don't have any evidence for it. And they also argue that for Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, you need the high priest. But, you know, it's, it's, this, it's all not entirely clear to me uh, whether indeed this is the case. What seems to be striking is that one, from 153 onwards, the, uh, uh, especially under the leadership of Jonathan the Maccabee, that Judean group around the Maccabees and those that support it pl place a lot of emphasis on their relationship being appointed by the king. And they are the ones who in charge in a way that kind of even though the Maccabean revolt uh, starts much earlier that is the moment in which the Maccabees really seize full control of the city of Jerusalem and so this so there there's a sense that even even as people uh, you know potentially dislike the Seleucids or they're in the middle of this um, kind of revolt against them they're still seeking somehow um seleucid blessing for who is going to be the hype they still have some power um or at least as you said so, something that carries political weight for them to say this is the person we say should be high priest is is am i get, understanding that correctly yeah that's 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 the bizarreness of the situation exactly so so in 175 for example the the seleucid king exchanges a high priest uh, and they're still from the same high priestly family it's the brother of the former high priest and 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 that's fine it's the family of the high priest and then then that person gets exchanged again um, but that really that the Maccabees are also once they they once they seize control over large parts of Jerusalem and really are subduing the other groups that seem to exist, but for whom we have little evidence, um, they still must be there. Right. Um, once the Maccabees are seizing this, they then also play up their relationship with the central uh, central central power. Yeah, absolutely. 
So, so it seems like high priest is, or at least the way the Seleucids treat it, high priest is, it's not a hereditary office necessarily. It's an office that is awarded like a governorship. Is, is that the way other Jewish people would see that role? Or is that a bone of contention with some of them? Uh, it certainly is a bone of contention. So, so the high priesthood is is linked to a specific family. Now, the family is very, very large, but in theory, it's the family of Aaron the priest and later Zadok. And largely, the Seleucid Empire doesn't really interfere in local, uh, in local administration, and and doesn't challenge that. We also have many hereditary priesthoods in other parts of the Seleucid Empire. And we don't really see the Seleucids taking any even interest in in changing this. So that's so therefore Judea is also interesting because it appears to be it appears to be slightly different. Um, however, in the 170s, there's a Seleucid king Antiochus IV, and he initially exchanges the high priest from the same family and then exchanges the high priest again. And that individual is not from the priestly family. And, and so and, that and is this hmm? Bacchides? Is, am I pronouncing that name right? This the person nobody likes. It's initially Menelaus, but but okay. yes, absolutely, Bacchides is, is is part of that group too. So so it goes from Jason, and then Jason uh, gets exchanged with Menelaus, and and this seems to be at least that's how the books of Maccabees presented that this seems to be really some of the things that gets the gets some groups in Judea really broiling against this is not how it should be and of having maybe too much influence. And there's clearly many different groups and many different directions of people who think how the Judean priesthood should be run. Uh, and especially after these exchanges of the high priesthood, that's when when uh, 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 these groups seem to become noisier and less content. Okay. So we have a um, a tension here between kind of secular and r religious control and powerful political people within the community at large, kind of wanting their own say as to how this should go. Um, so it seems like the you know this high priest this is an important role. Do we have a sense of what is the role? What what does a high priest do? Absolutely. So we don't have 100% knowledge of what the high priest's role, let's say, in 175 BCE was. But Judeans thought for a very, very long period of time what the role of the high priest in the history of the high priesthood was, right? So on the holiest of holies, that is on Yom Kippur, uh, uh, on Yom Kippur, the high priest is the only individual who can go into the holiest of holy and perform a, a sacrifice. To the divine, um, the high priest also has to live in certain uh, has to live certain purity purity laws that mm -hmm. that that his family have to adhere to that that other members of the family don't have to adhere to, and it's a it's a it's it's the immediate relationship between the divine and the temple state of Jerusalem. So the high priest is living. Um, a life in such a way that enables them to have better communication with with the divine. Yes, absolutely, and and they are uh, uh, one of the leading voices in the in the council in the Sanhedrin. Um, there are other individuals. You mentioned the individual Bacchides earlier, for example. That's a Seleucid general who who governor who is in the area, right? But mm -hmm. there's an external individual. Uh, but we also seem to think that from the second century onwards that the council itself can also have positions who sits on this council, who are these families, right? And they seem to have positions that don't necessarily align with that of the high priest, but the high priest has a very important uh, and often the senior voice within the, the, that, that council, okay. which is the only political articulation of, uh, of the city of Jerusalem. 